Several years now there have been rumours floating around about the use of motors within the pro racing scene. The UCI refers to this as technological fraud rather than the motor doping that is being banded around in the media. We were invited along to the UCI headquarters in Switzerland just to take a look at the technology that's being used to detect or, or just deter any future cheaters. The UCI told us there are four shortlisted methods to detect motors. Those were X-ray, ultrasonic, thermal imaging and magnetic interrogation or resistance. The UCI had a couple of, sort of self-defined parameters for this test. It had to be effective, it had to be cost effective because they wanted to roll this out across all the federations at some point. It had to be fast, just due to the amount of bikes that are in a bike race. Most importantly, it had to be very difficult to beat. One of the first methods that they used was ultrasonic. While it sort of worked, the results were inconsistent due to different frame materials, carbon layups, densities, and you can see why, because this is the sort of knowledge that manufacturers keep secret so they can build the best bikes. Another method was x-ray. The test was slow to conduct as it needed a central area. Now if you take, for instance, the Tour de Romandie this year, there are 507 tests taken just to organise that many bikes in one tent. It wasn't really a feasible idea. A final consideration was administration. Some countries have strict guidelines about the use of radioactive materials. A third process is thermal imaging, and initially they had some very good results. It can only really be used when the motor is in use. For a thermal imaging camera to be used, it had to be used during a race. There are safety concerns. You can't have a motorbike up alongside the riders scanning every rider. The other thing is that there needs to be a clear line of sight. And with pedal strokes, you have legs, you have other riders, wheels, all blocking the line of sight to where we think a motor would probably have to sit in a frame. And finally, the UCI actually found it quite easy to use a material to shield the heat dissipation from a motor within a frame. While the initial results were good, thermal imaging wasn't quite there. With those three methods dismissed, it led us to the fourth, which is magnetic resistance. Now what's most surprising about this is you think the hardware is custom built, very sort of high tech things, but it's just an iPad mini. There's an adapter that goes with it that creates a structured magnetic field. The third part of this is their custom iPad software. And this interprets the magnetic flux density. The other thing this application does for the user is it generates a visual image so it's very easy to see where on a frame there might be some fraud. The magnetic resistance method hit all the UCI's objectives as it was reliable, easy to use, globally available, and most importantly, quick. Use of an iPad mini allows the user to conduct these tests very efficiently. So at Paris Bay this year, there are 232 tests carried out. So this shows that it's an effective way of detecting or deterring technological fraud without disturbing a team or the race organisation. These tests are based on random selection. But the ECI have said that they also monitor race activity by watching social media channels and TV coverage just to have a look at any sort of potentially odd bike changes and then these can be earmarked for testing later on. It's clear to see the UCI are taking technological fraud very seriously. And whether they're using the mechanical resistance method as an actual detection system or more of as a deterrent is yet to be seen. The UCI want to roll this out to all their federations and they have a target of anywhere between 10 and 12,000 bikes tested this season. So expect to see more tests at more races this year.